Hey guys, Russ Tindall here with Blue Line Wood Flags. Welcome back to another video on the channel. Today we are continuing our discussion about how I create and my workflow on how uh, I make uh, wood flags using VCarve Pro and my design process. We're going to take it one step further. Uh, if you watched the first video where I talked about just creating a basic American flag, uh, today we're taking that a little bit further and we're going to talk about graphics and how we bring in graphics to that design. Uh, I'll put the first uh, video link uh, if you didn't see that in a card in the upper right corner of the screen so feel free to watch that video at your leisure so with that let's get after it All right, guys, as I said a moment ago in the intro that we're talking about graphics and how we're going to bring in graphics to this flag. Uh, perhaps you've seen a lot of those public safety flags out there uh, where you see a police patch or a police badge and it's something that you want to do. This video is going to show you how to do that. It's going to show you how I do that. Uh, maybe you want to make a corporate flag and bring in a corporate logo or something to that effect. Um, the principle is the same. Uh, a word of caution, though, that if you're going to make money off of something or you're going to advertise something for sale, just make sure that the image or graphic you use is in the public domain or is royalty and is royalty free or that it's not protected by copyright or trademark. Don't, your, don't get yourself in a jam and put something out there for sale that uh, commercially uh, that could potentially get yourself in trouble. Just make sure you have rights to use it uh, and that it's A, in public domain, like I said, or B, that you have specific permission from the owner of that image, the owner of that graphic. So with that said, let's get rolling. Uh, so this is where we left off. I'm going to cut over here and you can see it's the flag that we uh, had. I'm going to uh, show my tool paths here. Let's pin those down so they don't move. And again, it's where we left off in the last video. We created our union, we created our stripes, and we established our three tool paths. If you remember, there was a V-bit, 90 car, uh, V-bit, let's try that again a V90 uh, carve for our union and that our stripes here used two bits. I specified to mill them out a quarter, or a quarter inch end mill and an eighth inch end mill to do the finishing path on that, finishing pass, I should say. Well, today we're gonna bring in a graphic and let's, uh, let's start with where we're gonna get our graphic from. I chose for the purposes of this demo to use the security police or security forces as they're now known today within the United States Air Force. I'm going to use their badge. This is something that is near and dear to my heart. It's how I got my start to law enforcement some blank years ago. I'm not going to age myself and tell you how many years ago that was. Uh, but let's go ahead and bring in a graphic. And I found this graphic on the internet and I'm going to go ahead and import it and it's under file operations. I have it saved in, within my hard drive and it's the third icon over. It says uh, import a bitmap or vectors from a file. So let's click on that and I have them saved over here under all my Adobe Illustrator files. So let's go find it. And it's U.S. Air Force Security Forces Badge. That's what I want to bring into this flag. So let's go ahead and hit open. And now that I have something added to this basic flag that I created before, let's change the name before we get, before we forget. So we don't overwrite this or, because I want to keep this as a basic flag template that I can use in the future. And I would suggest you do the same too. Uh, once you create your basic flag template, save it. Uh, that way, if you have additional flags that you want to make in the future, you don't have to redo the stars and the stripes. They're already there for you. Little hint of advice. Um, so let's go ahead and save as, and let's go ahead and we'll call it, let's place it on the desktop and let's call it demo. We'll call it demo flag. I already have a demo flag there, but we'll override it. So we'll say yes. Okay. 
Now everything that we do is going to be this new file and we're not going to save it uh, under what we created before. So once we've brought in our graphic uh, using this import of uh, bitmap or vector from a file function, you can see it comes in ungrouped. So let's hit G on our keyboard so we can group everything. And I'm just going to click on it and let's drag it over here somewhere where we want to put it. Well, I think that is kind of in the area where I want to go. Maybe I want to go to the right a little bit, give me a little more real estate to work with in case I want to write something on this line like uh, Sergeant so-and-so or Airman so-and-so, something to that effect. You never know. Uh, we may want to personalize this further later on down the line, or you may have uh, a family member or something that you want to create this for uh, and put their name on here and just make it a little extra special. So once we have our badge on there and we have it roughly in the area that we want to place it, we need to go ahead and align it with our stripes so that it's properly centered. So I'm going to select the uh, badge uh, and then I'm going to hold down shift and select my stripes. They're already grouped so I don't have to regroup those. And then I'm going to come up here to align, align selected. I'm going to click on it and align to, align to selection. And I'm going to use this far right button over here and it just shifted that badge up to where it's aligned uh, horizontally or vertically rather with those stripes. Now we just got to move it horizontally. Whoops, not that much. Uh, just the badge, not the stripes. And we got to decide on our final placement where we want that. So I think if we came over just a little bit to the left, that looks pretty good. And like I said a moment ago, we have some real estate we can work with over here if we want to put some text or something on those lines. So we've got our badge, our graphic in there, but we're not done yet. We have to create some offsets and we've got to do some trimming uh, of these stripes because as you can tell our stripes are interfering with our graphic. They're going right through the graphic and we don't want that when we come to carving. We got to have our stripes stop short of the graphic. So how do we do that? Well, we have to create an offset. So let's zoom in a little bit closer to where I can just select this whole graphic. Uh, I'm going to ungroup it. I'm going to hit U on my keyboard so all the elements are ungrouped. I'm going to hold down the shift button. I'm going to click on this outer boundary, just that, and make it black. Now with everything else selected, I'm going to hit group so it groups it again. And we don't want to lose that group. And then once we have, I'm going to click off of everything. Now we have to go in, we have to create our offset. So I'm going to click on this outer boundary again. And I'm going to come to my offset and layout uh, area down here on the lower left of my screen. And I'm just, just going to click on this offset button, which is the first icon. I'm going to click on it. And I want my offset to come to the outside of this uh, badge element, this badge boundary. And I like to use an eighth of an inch. I find that for my flags and the size of my flags that an eighth of an inch works uh, pretty darn good. You may want to go make it bigger. I wouldn't go too much smaller, uh, but uh, definitely if you want to make it a quarter of an inch, go for it. You be you. Uh, but an eighth of an inch works pretty good for me. So I'm going to stick with 0.125. So I'm going to go ahead and I don't need to click on any of these. They don't apply to this. So I'm going to click on offset and you can see what it did is it placed an offset around the outer perimeter of that badge that we just specified on offset vectors. So I'm going to close that. Now, what we want to do is reassociate this outer boundary and this other, all these other badge elements and regroup them. So I'm going to select the uh, badge elements or that badge. I'm going to hold down shift, select this outer boundary and hit G on my keyboard once again. Now, the next thing that we need to do is we need to trim away all that uh, interior stripes that are interfering with this badge. And what that will do is we'll take the stripes up to this offset and trim away everything on the inside, but leave the stripes 
intact on the outside. This will make sense in a minute. Bear with me. So let's go ahead and select our stripes first. We're going to hold down shift and then select this outer offset that we just created. We're going to come up here to trim. Our trim function is under edit objects and we're going to click on that and we want to clear inside the boundary. We don't want to clear outside. We want to take away everything inside. And let's just hit clear. And you can see what it did is it cleared out all the stripes that were interfering with the graphics that are inside this offset that we created. So now we don't need the offset per se anymore. Uh, so let's just go ahead and select it. And just to avoid any confusion, we'll delete it. We'll delete it from our project. And we also don't need, from looking at this, I can tell I don't want this element on there and I don't want this element on there. They're just too small. And I think if we try to carve that, it's just not gonna look too good. Uh, but we'll leave these bigger ones. So when, just be, uh, be aware that whenever you use the trim functions, it's gonna break your, uh, your tool paths apart again. So you need to regroup them. So come back over here and select all your stripes and everything that you want grouped together. And just remember to hit G on your keyboard and group them back together as one group. So when you come over here and you're gonna to have to reassociate your tool paths, or you're gonna rerun them again, I should say. Let's take that one off. Uh, let's open that stripe and let's select them all and then just hit calculate. And that will calculate the uh, clearance bit and the finishing bit. So. Let's close that and we have that part done. So the only final thing we need to do is determine how we're going to carve our badge, in this case the security forces badge. So from experience, I know that this is going to take a 60 degree V-bit. Um, maybe this is your first time using your CNC machine, maybe it's the first time carving a police badge or something similar. What I would recommend is that you uh, lay out three or four of these things and you try them with different bits and you do a little experimentation and get a feel for what works best uh, for your machine, your bits, and how you design stuff. That'll give you an idea going f further in the future what you want to use for your bits uh, based on your graphic size. That has a lot to do with it as well. But for mine, I'm going to click off of that and I'm just going to select that graphic. I know that I want to use a 60 degree V-bit. So I'm going to come up here to my V-carve uh, under toolpath operations. I'm going to select it and our start depth will be zero. We're going to start at the material surface. Uh, we're not going to use a flat depth and my bit has already been selected for me. It's the 8675309 V60 Groovy Jenny. Uh, it's a solid V down shear bit. So I'm going to go ahead. It's already selected. I don't need to select it. I'm going to come down here. And the only thing I need to do to this toolpath is name it properly. So let's name it V60 Jenny. So when I get into my cam software and I'm looking at it at a moment's glance, I can see what bit I'm running. And let's call it SF badge for security forces badge or whatever you want to call it for your project. I'm just going to hit calculate and I get a little pop up pop up that tells me I have some vectors that may contain overlaps or intersections. Um, let's continue anyway. Um, I'll show you what one of them are and basically it's where this R and I meet, you can see how that R overlaps the I. That's one of the intersections. Uh, if you want to fix that, you can. I don't think it's necessary, so I'm gonna choose to leave it just the way it is uh, for the purposes of this video. Um, you could go ahead and select it, or select the whole badge, and then unselect just the R and then move it over with your arrow keys and then reassociate everything. But 
Um, I think just the way it is, uh, the, the, these letters are, are kind of small. I don't think that you're going to really see it or that it's going to make too much of a difference. So uh, let's close it. And let's take a look at this project in 3D. So let's click on that. And again, our 3D preview tool paths. Uh, it looks a little like this YouTube symbol here, this white arrow with the red uh, rectangle. So let's click on it. And let's select all of our tool paths first. And let's, I like to hit reset preview and let's preview all tool paths. And it'll just simply run through uh, and create your flag or what, it'll, what it will look like in 3D on your machine. And the speed at which this does this and calculates this, again, will be your resolution settings and the speed of your PC. So again, here we go. This is what that badge uh, looks like once it's carved out. And again, I'm happy that I removed those little uh, areas right here. I think if I had left those, uh, it might not look good. Um, so I'm glad I got rid of those. And the badge carved very nicely. Uh, here you can see where that R interferes a little bit with the eye, but I think overall uh, you don't notice it. So that's why I left it, is because you wouldn't notice it. And I think overall the project looks good. So let's, let's put it on an angle and get a look uh, and see from a angled view. I think overall the project turned out really, really well. Now we talked about saving this, uh, our projects in uh, the beginning in our first video. And uh, remember that uh, depending on how your machine is set up, you may start your, uh, your processing from the lower left, the lower right of your machine. Maybe you start it from the back of the machine. Uh, that's all done in material setup up here in the upper right of your toolpath screen. Uh, you just click on set and here over here on your XY datum is where you establish your final XY positioning. Mine is the lower left. So if you remember, I had started out in the center when I designed my American flag, but for this one, uh, we had already moved it down to the lower left. So that's why we're there. Uh, material setup, whoops, would you, yes, we'll recalculate. All right, all tool paths recalculated. All right, so essentially that's our flag. Uh, and uh, if you liked this video, if you're getting value from this content, guys, and this is helping you out in any way, shape, or form, please subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. Don't forget to like this video, give it a thumbs up, and uh, hit the bell icon to be, post, uh, to be notified when I post new content. I try to uh, post new stuff as often as I possibly can. Sometimes I get a little too busy in the shop and I don't get as much time as I would like uh, to get on YouTube and get this stuff out to you, but I certainly make a faithful attempt. So again, uh, thumbs up, would really appreciate it. So with that, I will let you guys go. Uh, I may, with this flag, go ahead and carve it and show you how, what it would look like when it's all done. Uh, and if I don't use this one, I will certainly bring in another project and show you these very same principles on how we work with it in VCarve, and then how I take it out to Mach 4, which is my cam uh, processor uh, for my Avid machine and how I actually carve it out in the workshop. So stay tuned for that. With that, have a great one, guys. Stay safe in your workshop.